Hello, and welcome to episode 21 of Mishmash Mayhem. Mishmash Mayhem. The podcast where we take the schoolyard conversation of, hey, which one of these fictional characters would win in a fight, and we talk about it on a podcast. That's what this is. Oh, it's been a long time since you've said that. I mean, that's that's not true. I said that only yesterday. Um, to, in fact, I'm, I probably said it today when I was at work, when someone said, have you done this? And I said, that's what this is. But I haven't said it in, in that context in a long time. Yeah, it's been a long time since it's been podcasted. Indeed. Mm. You know, because it's New Year. Hey. It is. It is the 9th of De- December of January. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 9th of January. Six days later than we recorded episode one last year. Um, sure. So, you know, so officially, it's over, we're over a year old. Does that mean I was at home when I recorded? I don't know. I just know that on um, episode one, we mentioned it was the 3rd of January. Ah, it's good memories. Um, the 3rd of January was a Thursday, so probably I was back at work. So probably I was actually not at home. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think I took off loads of holiday like I did this year. But I mean, this year was more by, like, convenience rather than anything else. So, you know, how's the first week and a bit of 2020 treating you? Um, not too bad. Uh, made some cookies. They're pretty damn tasty. I might eat another one shortly. And then I'll have to make a cake because otherwise I won't have anything for work tomorrow because <laughs> uh, I'll have eaten the last cookie. Uh... I was doing some cool stuff today at work. Um, and there's like these two different methods to get rid of the same noise. And one of them just like work to treat. And it's like, oh my God, yes, that's beautiful. And then this other one is being a pain in the butt and doesn't work. Um, so that'll be a fun problem for other people to solve with me tomorrow. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I'm looking forward to going climbing at the weekend because I haven't been climbing in a while. I like climbing. That's cool. Um, yeah. The only bad thing that happened was my key snapped in my bike lock on when I was about to leave work yesterday. So oh, I had no. to walk home. And then today I took in a pair of pliers and my spare key and came home. But my bike locks are both seizing up a bit, so I'm probably going to have to buy some new ones. There's a lot of new things I need to buy. In fact, I need to write a list. I won't do it now. I might do it now of things that I need to buy new versions of. So I need like new climbing shoes. I need new boots. I need new bike locks. Um, just lots of things that are gonna, you know, cost money. How about how about you? How's yours, how's yours going? Yeah, it's been alright. Sort of getting over the weird trying to see people look Christmas and New Year and messing with my sleep pattern. Yeah, sorry you know. about that. Well, that's alright. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry that you came to visit and I was asleep a lot, but. Uh, I mean, you know, I slept a lot on one of those days too. It was a good sleep. That's a good sleep. But yeah, no, it's starting to get back to normal now. Which is good. Hooray! But yeah. But no, I mean, unlike most people, I sort of, I'm back at work on New Year's Day, so it doesn't really make much difference to me. Aw. That's all right. It's sad. It's retail for you. It's retail. I used to work in retail once. I quit. Mostly because I was going to university. Uh, but, yeah. That's how long ago I worked in retail, people. If you were... If, you, if, if you're listening and you were bag guy or bug eyes or tank man, let me know. Are they aware of those nicknames? Almost certainly not. Um, but tank man was an elderly man who came up to the till and talked about tanks. A lot. Bagman was, I think his name was Barry, and he was a gardener. And he always came yeah. in, and he always came out with soil, and he always used to ask for bags. Nowadays, we wouldn't give them to him because, you know, like the whole plastic thing. Um, but it was good advertisement for, for the shop at the time because, you know, he'd be walking around with a, one of our bags instead of some other bags. So we just gave them to him. Um, and then there was a lady called Bug Eyes because she had like eyes which almost popped out of her face, and she was definitely shoplifting. Fair enough. <laughs> so yeah those are the three customers I remember uh, we've got some good regulars uh, we didn't tend to have too many nicknames actually at our store we've just sort of got um, we've got Bowie 
and uh, the Nazi taxi driver and the body cracker. I mean, those all sound like nicknames. Well, yeah, no, so we don't have many. <laughs> We've got those three, but I don't think any of our other customers have nicknames. Ah, fair. Fair. Right, well, I hope everyone else has had a good New Year time. Mm. Uh, but now it is time to begin. Is this canonically season two or is it still season one? I don't know if we necessarily have seasons. It's year two. It's episode well, 21, isn't it? Because the, the last one that got uploaded started yeah. with an S2. It said season two. It was special two. Oh, special two, not season two. I see. Yeah, because the two oh, oh, over our break, we've uploaded two specials. We did uh, the mishmash language with unparliamentary language, um, which was very silly. And then the one that got updated, uploaded this week was the outtakes episode, Mishmash Moments. Indeed it was. Indeed it was. I did actually listen to that one. Did you? Was what did you think? Mm. I, I guess didn't know we... that Katie and your mum were going to talk on it. Oh. You were right, that was a surprise to me. <laughs> I, I just thought, like, as I was going to ask them for little fight ideas anyway, I might as well just get it on and be like, hey, so how do you think the podcast is? And then it's nice to get some live feedback. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was fun to listen to. I can if you... laughing at a lot of our silly bits. I can't remember yes. what the best bits were, but... Um, it was one that made me particularly laugh. Okay, so I imagine we're sticking with season one until we have like a Hall of Fame championship thing. Yeah, I guess so. And the, right. that would be worth it. So who knows how long it will be? <laughs> yeah. Who needs to know how long their seasons are? Right. People, farmers, um, they need to know how long their seasons are. That's it. From last year, Rock Lee still has his mission is MASH. And today is going for his mayhem. He is going for his mayhem. Speaking of his mayhem, I'm going to tell you how we go. So, as always, as before, as tradition, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce our fighters. Tradition dictates that we will introduce the reigning champion first. And as mentioned, that is Rock Lee from Naruto or Naruto or Naruto. Yeah. He's back I say from... Naruto. Some people say Naruto and then I say, I don't care. You know what I mean? Get on with it. Yeah. You know, because um, Rock Lee's come back to the podcast, he's finished running at Area 51 now, so... <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, he has. <laughs> um, but then we're going to introduce the other combatant, and we're going to talk about, for both of them, uh, you know, their skills, their their strengths, their weaknesses, their attributes, uh, how they celebrated New Year, um, what shampoo they use, and... <laughs> various other things in order to give ourselves a better understanding of how they might act and contribute to a fight to the death. Then, of course, we're going to put them in a fight to the death. Uh, well, I say fight to the death. It might not necessarily be death, as one of our previous episodes had a non-death um, victory. Um, but essentially, a fight till incapacitation. In in incapacitation. Yes. Until yes, the I'm... victor is determined. Yeah, I fight until the fight until victory. <laughs> uh, but we don't know where they will fight yet because that is determined by the die of death. Die of death, um, which you can hear here. That is me rattling my box of dice. It probably sounded awful and not like me rattling my box of dice. Uh, but that will be rolled, and that will give us our arena for today's institutional fight on the whim we will then discuss what we think about that normally kind of what comes to mind and then we will discuss how we think the fight will go and that is what you can expect today All right. and that pretty much every, every day that you listen to this yes yeah unless you're listening to mishmash moments or mishmash language in which case you absolutely don't expect that no. well mishmash language kind of yeah okay that that did as well but um just in a, a more political-minded way. Oh, I, I don't think I was thinking politically at all. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe more so than normal. Right, anyway, without further ado, it's time to reintroduce... Definitely not Guy. <laughs> no. So, Rock Lee, as has been mentioned, is a ninja from the Naruto series. 
he specializes in taijutsu, which is punching and kicking stuff really well. Yeah, but the, one of the reasons he specializes in taijutsu is because he's really good at it. And the other reason is because he can't do genjutsu or ninjutsu. I mean, which do you think was the first reason? It's got to have been that he couldn't do the others, right? Because no one like, yeah. says, you know what? I'm going to try painting. Oh my god, I'm amazing at painting. No, wait, that's no, they do do that. No one goes, I'm amazing <laughs> at painting. I'm going to try painting. You know, apart from maybe like some people, you know, maybe some like Tory silver spoons who are like, oh, I think I'd be really good at fox hunting. Let's go fox hunting. I don't know why that was the first one that came to mind, but it was. I'm sorry if you're a Tory and you don't go fox hunting. I don't understand why they don't just go, but like, if they want to do hunting, they should do it for an animal that needs to be cold anyway. I mean, what animals do need to be cold? Badgers. Humans. Everybody knows Badger loves mashed potato. Yeah, that's one badger that definitely needs colour. <laughs> what, what? No, he's, he's beautiful. Right, anyway. Um, so yeah, Rock Lee has various uh, moves that make him very good at hand-to-hand combat, which will potentially come up. The ninjas of the Naruto world gain their powers from Chakra, a mystical source running through their bodies. This is blocked off by seven gates within the body, which stops people being overloaded with Chakra, as that can have a massive strain upon them. Lee, however, at the point in time in which this Lee is being used, I don't know if that made sense, but I think people will understand. Um, well, now. Yeah. Can uh, open five of those seven gates to give himself ridiculous power boosts, which is cool. But it does, however, have quite a drastic strain upon his body. Um, so will require much recovery time afterwards. So he only does it in emergencies. Emergency. Emergency. So, despite being really strong and very good at the punches and kicks, um, Lee is also an incredibly fast ninja person. Being able to run at, I don't know, like, faster than a normal human could run. (laughs) Being able to run at fast miles an hour. Yeah, well, I I don't know exactly how fast it is, is but, I mean, he's one of the fastest characters, and they're all kind of, sort of, Anime superhuman y, aren't they? They are. They are, they are. So, I don't know. He can run fast enough that, like, Usain Bolt doesn't have shit on him. I mean, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> because he can, like, all over the place. And again, if he opens, like, his chakra gates, then as well as it increasing his strength, it also increases his speed to make him basically faster than the eye can track. It happens. Mm. So he's quite a formidable opponent. Potentially, the one thing holding him back in a fight to the death situation is that he believes that fights should happen with respect, and he dislikes uh, immense cruelty towards your opponent. So he think he's very much of the opinion that you should fight until the fight is done, and not like needlessly destroy whoever you're against. If you beat them, you've beaten them and that should be where it stops. I mean, that's a, that's a, you know, it's a nice, a competitive ethic, not a, like, um, not, not, it's a, yeah, it's not a war ethic or a malicious ethic. It's very much a competitive ethic. Absolutely. Unless he really has to, he's not about killing whoever he fights. He's very much just like, if I stop them, then, that's fine. Yeah, he's very uh, sporting, I guess, is the word. Yeah, that, that, is, that is what I tried to say when I said competitive ethic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good sport. Jolly old good sport. Rather. Bravo, tipped up. Oh, that's, that's so cricket. And, like, generally, he's just a really nice guy anyway. He, like, sort of constantly, like, he's trying to big up everyone who's around him and be like, yeah, you're great and you can be a good ninja too. Big and up. I, yeah, and I will support you because I am a lovely chum. Oh, Yeah, let's go get a curry together. Yeah, the curry of life. Yeah, curry of life was his favourite thing. 
The Curry of Life was like a weird filler episode where it was like a, apparently a really disgusting curry. Although Lee loved it, but it was it had like rejuvenative powers. It wasn't the best filler episode because we all know that that was episode one hundred and one. Is that the Kakashi Smart one? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I think it was one hundred and one. I know that, yeah. And it's just amazing. Behind, yeah, yeah, it is. It is episode one hundred and one. <laughs> You'll die laughing. A fitting end for one such as you. <laughs> I just love it. It's great. I might watch. I might watch that when we're done. <laughs> okay. Um, it's twenty minutes of excellence. Um. So, yeah. I mean, that's kind of Lee's deal, really. He runs. Um. But yeah, yeah, as well as sort of his standard Taijutsu and stuff. He's also. Uh, very accomplished at drunken boxing if we were happen to be in a scenario where he gets drunk. <laughs> if we happen to be in a pub. Yeah. Obviously, being the sort of upstanding, uh, wholesome character he is, out of choice, he would never drink alcohol. But on a few occasions, he's done it by accident. Uh, and it turns out that he's a very violent drunk and a very unpredictably violent drunk, which makes him surprisingly competent at the drunken fist uh, fighting style, because his opponent cannot predict any of his movements, and then he doesn't really reserve his strength when he's drunk and will just destroy people. Hooray! Yay! So, if he were to get drunk, he would become less coherent and potentially more deadly. Just like my typing. <laughs> That's right, my typing is deadly when I'm drunk. You'll sure. die typing! A fitting end for one such as you. Will, will, will they die typing, or will you type dying? Um, is that like tie dying? No. Oh, then no. Okay. Are you tie dying? No. But that, that's kind of a quick sum up of Lee and the things that Lee does. The things that he does. Lovely. Swish. Right. Well, last time I gave you the clue that I definitely remembered and definitely didn't listen to the end of the episode this morning to remind myself of what the clue was. I mean, to be fair, it has been like three months since we recorded. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, was that they are a, a Disney character and that they appeared to be the henchmen at first, but it transpired that they were indeed the main villain. Uh, you knew exactly who I was talking about. I did. Um, I introduced to you Doris, also known as D-O-R- 15. I don't know what DOR stands for. It probably tells me somewhere here, but it doesn't. Um, for those of you who are not sure who I'm on about, I am on about the bowler hat of bowler hat guy from Meet the Robinsons, Doris. Uh, if you haven't seen the film, you should, because it's an excellent film. Um, it is an excellent film. It has a dinosaur, a pizza delivery guy, and zombies. I don't remember the pizza delivery guy. He is one of the family. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking of, like, someone who delivers pizza. I mean, I'm aware he delivers pizza, but you don't see him delivering pizza in the film. I was thinking of a character who actively... Yeah, well, he's a pizza delivery guy who's also a superhero. Yeah, everyone's a superhero. It's great. Uh, there's time travel. Uh, yeah, it's... Um, if you like if you like fruit shoots, you know, you meet lots of Robinsons, so you'll love that. <laughs> <laughs> What? What? That's a terrible, terrible joke. What are you on about? That was great. That's oh, making, right. It's making the edit. Better do. Uh, <laughs> so, Doris, as I mentioned, is a bowler hat. It's, um, I think, our first non-anthropomorphic character. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Would. Definitely non-humanoid, um, because they are indeed shaped like a bowler hat. When you're first introduced to them in the film, um, they are a top of bowler hat guy, and they just appear to be helping him conduct his schemes. A bowler hat guy does have a real name, but I'm not going to tell you because uh, that would be spoiling things. Um, also, it's not important to Doris, but it transpires that Doris is desperate for world domination, and with 
her how many legs does she have it looks like eight her eight spidery claw legs actually no it looks like six six spidery metal legs with claws on um and a toothbrush and possibly a razor um she plans for world domination originally she was designed um by cornelius robinson uh, and an excellent and fantastic designer fa- famed across the nation to be an aide as a helping hat that's why she's shaped like a helping hat um and just have utensils to help you know brush people's teeth to help groom them to tie up their bow ties um but unfortunately she kind of became self-aware and realized that she was destined for so much more in discovering some of her powers um well, I mean, she got put away, confined to be um, scrapped and destroyed, but she managed to escape and came across Bowler Hat Guy. So, ignore the fact that she wants to do world domination. What is she capable of? Well, I mean, first of all, she is made of metal. Um, I suppose the hat is probably quite comfy as well, but um, a lot of her is metallic. Imagine, like... What's covered in fabric and is metal? A chair. Yeah. A, a thin chair that you don't want to punch. It's like a thin chair. How many chairs do you want to punch? Ones that look like Boris Johnson? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so she's made of metal. She's got metal claws. She has a toothbrush for evilly toothbrushing you. Um, she is capable of flying. I don't really know how, but she is. Um, I mean, obviously it was levitation was there designed for her to be able to like you know otherwise you'd have to crawl down someone's body with mechanical claws which would be bloody awful um she has a projector like a holographic projector like r2d2 um and most importantly uh, which is a very strong part of her world domination plan she's capable of mind control um and mind control is not limited to humans either it's quite excessive mind control um she can mind control frogs and dinosaurs those are the only things she's shown to mind control other than humans but it's implied therefore that she could mind control anything if she wanted to and even better she can mind control these not even with her main body but with tiny little replica dorises little baby dorises that emerge from her I didn't Doris. even know you could do that. Yeah, I was trying to merge Doris and Orifice. A Orifice, yeah, which emerged from a Dorifice. Um, to you know, do things. Um, indeed, in the in the future, uh, because she's a robot and she can mind control people, um, and she's evil, she manages to construct a mega Doris which is essentially a factory that creates hundreds and hundreds of her. But that's not really that important because she, she'll she just be Doris in this fight. For that is what she is. Well, Domination's her game. Doris, or D-O-R-15, is her name. She's got claws, she's got a toothbrush, and she's got a cause. It's Doris. That was a really good ad pitch. It wasn't too bad. I've also just seen that she has, you know, like her six tentacle legs. They can extend quite far. It looks like up to about two meters or so. And they can all have like spinning blades on the end, which would really hurt. So Yeah, I knew I thought one of them did. Yeah, apparently all six. That's there crazy. It's so what, crazy she, if she would try to attract an arm, she can then replace what's on the end of it. No, I think they're just all all like that by default. I thought some of them had claws on. Yeah, no, they all have claws on. So they have claws and circular saws. Well, they're like one and the same. They're like, they're not circular saws. She just spins three blades, which are claws. Oh, I see. So she can yeah. just rotate her claws fast enough to create a circular blade esque movement. Yes, yeah, yeah. The kind of thing that you wouldn't want to be in the way of. No. Unless you were a carrot and you wanted to be chopped up carrot yeah unless you're a vegetable who's really into euthanasia of vegetables when do vegetables die 
Man, they just feels down. Yeah, because like, if you cut a plant right, they live for a while, and I'm pretty sure that you know a carrot. If you had, if you had a slice of carrot that was freshly dug from the ground, and you were to plant plant it in some way, it would probably still grow. I don't think it's actually dead then. Right, it's that time. We need what to find out where this fight is taking place. So it's time. Oh, it's about quarter past eight. So it's time we roll the die of death. Interesting. I also don't think I don't feel like it will work as well as it should because yours can fly. But you never know. Um. So do you remember us? I can't remember what episode it was, but instead one of them saying, "Wouldn't it be good if we had like a conveyor belt to death?" Yes. So this fight takes place in a sawmill. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Yeah, because we were talking about it, and it was a really cool idea. It's still a really cool idea. Hmm. All right, so we, we obviously we would have said sawmill, um, yep. you know, just to make it a place. But were we kind of trying to constrain it to the the part of the sawmill where, you know, it's going in and you're going to get sawed? Yeah. I mean, I'm happy for it to start with them falling onto the conveyor belt mysteriously. <laughs> and then walls being erected around them. All right, this is going to be interesting. I like it. Um, who? Right, okay. So now the main question is, who's going to start at the closer end? Well, Leo, because he's champion, so he was already there. Well, of course. I love it. Such a... He's the, he's the only person he's affected by it, <laughs> and he starts closer to it. I, I can be entirely believe that Lee would be like, yeah, you know what my training is for today? I'm just going to run on a conveyor belt and jumping over logs and stuff, and if I fuck up, I'll get hit by a saw. Because You know what? You're absolutely right. That would be something Lee would do. He'd be like, yeah, yeah and he'd be like, you know, chopping the logs in two and whatever. Oh, well, yeah, doing flips over them and stuff. And... <clears throat> yeah. Numpty. Right, yeah, so Lee, he's doing his uh, daily warm-ups, his daily... Day routines. I mean, it's not necessarily his everyday routine, but it's today's routine. It's, uh, you know, it's his Thursday the 9th of January's routine. I nearly said February. Um, so he's like jogging along the treadmills, um, smashing up logs as they come to him and staying well clear of the ginormous circular saw of soaring death. And all of a sudden, there shined a shining demon. <laughs> in the middle of the sawmill. Anyway, so demon, by the way, it was never there. Maybe it was. Who knows? Lee doesn't. Lee isn't good at genjutsu. He's not very good at getting out of it either. He doesn't know if he got caught down through a small ventilation mm. shaft. He hears this clink, 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 clink. clink. He can't hear it very well because there's you know a giant fucking saw behind him, um, and the logs being cut up. And like the for the for donks, you know the, the you know that really nice satisfying wooden for donk when like logs hit the floor, or oh, yeah, there's lots of that going on. Is a wooden uh, for donk your favourite for donk? Yeah, I think it might be. Speaking of um, satisfying noises, we got a new set of like sharp knives for Christmas, and when you get them out with like the wood block, they do a proper swing. Oh yeah, it's pretty cool. That's cool. Um, but yeah, he hears this clattering and uh, this bowler hat with a glowing red beacon laser eye thing. It looks like a, it's just a red dot. Crawls out and um, pairs two of its tendrilous mechanical limbs for slicing. Mm. Oh god, not slicing. Begin. He's going to be very confused. I mean, I would be. I mean, how does anyone find his secret training hideout place? Well, so he's not necessarily going to know what to make of a bowler hat. It isn't inherently evil, even with metal arms. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, I don't think he's ever seen a bowler hat before either. Um, you know, it isn't... I suppose he'd probably akin it to a puppet. He'd probably think it's a puppet, if anything. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. For listeners who are not aware of what puppets are, um, I mean, obviously you're aware of what a puppet is. But in the Naruto universe, a puppet is a um, artificially constructed weapon, weapon, doll, 
usually humanoid, but not necessarily, mm. uh, controlled by a user by thin chakra strings connecting their fingers to the puppet in order to control it and manipulate it. Like that. Yeah, and then they move their chakra into the puppet so it can move. move yeah, and, and use and jitsu and puppets things. Are cool. Yeah, but and it's the general rule puppets are cool, but in narrative they're awesome. Um, so my, my best guess would be that is exactly what Lee would think this is. It would be a puppet. Uh, but it's not a puppet. It's Doris. Um, so Doris sees Lee. Now Doris, she's just entered. Um, she's quite a methodical and highly intelligent creature. Um, doesn't know much about these capabilities because mind, she's from a world of regular humans um, apart from pizza delivery superheroes and other various weird things that we're not going to get into. Um, but she would s probably sit there with just like, you know, two arms defensively ready and just survey, get an idea of what's going on. Lee's running along his things. She'd be like recording the speed of the conveyor belt, the distance to the saw, those kind of things. Yeah. Just getting a feel for what what it's like. Um, are there any access panels, for example, to the to the machinery? Uh, probably. Well, there's got to be at the very least an on-off switch and then like an emergency stop. No, she's not interested in either of those. <laughs> like the things that Doris would be interested in would be like a speed control. I mean, it might have a speed control. All right. Let where where would the speed control be? It's got to be somewhere near the saw uh, um, like off the conveyor belt yeah because why would you have it on the conveyor belt you wouldn't <laughs> exactly um, so I think if Doris spies this knowing that she is you know a computer and well trained at things she would probably try to manip think about you know why would I go and try and kill this man or I can make it seem like an accident because she doesn't know that Rockley's a ninja. She can just see him jumping over light logs and stuff at regular speed, but she doesn't know that he's almost certainly going to be able to outrun any speed she puts on that device. Well, I think um, Lee would be paying more, would uh, like allow her to do it because he'd be paying more attention to the event she came from because if he thinks it's a puppet, he's like, well, there must be a puppet user coming. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. It's fair common. So... Doris would just kind of like survey the scene, doesn't see anything wrong, uh, you know, sees this control panel, um, goes to like crawl along the uh, thing, hoping she hasn't been seen. I mean, she probably has been, but, and Lee, Rock Lee's just going to be like, you know, every now and again, just glancing at Doris, walking about, I like, think, and it's an interesting puppet, but where, where's the person? Like looking at this event, trying to see if they can deduce any kind of link to a person, but they see nothing. He sees nothing. Fair enough. Um, uh, and it's at this point that Doris starts to make the conveyor belt go faster. Yeah. Like, you know, he hears a little kind of like unscrewing noise and a little tinkering and a little zzz, and then like the conveyor belt starts speeding up. And suddenly he's running at like I mean, he's fine with, he's going to be fine, but, you know, he's well, going yeah. from like a nice comfortable jog, jog. to, or oh, like a, a good sprint very quickly. Yeah. So at this point, he thinks, hmm, maybe I need to stop that ball out. <laughs> how unsporting. That's not how he sounds, but that might be what he said. That's how he would sound if he was a uh, tough. Yeah, <laughs> he'd probably be like, oh, that's, he'd probably be like, very clever. Reveal yourself, puppet master, and then you'd probably like jump, jump off, and like you want one of those cool ninja things. And obviously, he's got to go for the bowler hat because he can't see anyone else. He'd probably go for like just some kind of Aerial chop. kick, yeah, or a kick, a chop or a kick, chop or a kick, kick. It's more, it's more Lee, isn't it? A kick. Mm. Um. But Doris would, you know, be able to see this in time because I don't think Lee's going to be going at his maximum stupor levels. 
Well, no, he's so putting in a lot of energy into just keeping up with the belt. So, Doris will notice this kick and coming and like scutter out the way and leave sm- his kick smashes into the control panel, destroying it from being twiddled with again, but therefore also keeping it on maximum power. She's not going to be too happy about the attempt on her life. Yes. Her digital life. And, you know, essentially she's made the conveyor belt faster. So Lee is having to exert more effort and concentrate on, you know, dodging or breaking logs so he doesn't get carried into the saw. Yeah. So this is her sort of prime time to go on the offensive with, you know, her, one of her grabby claws. Yeah. Maybe she could try and grab him and sort of swing him towards the saw or something. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure she'd... I'm not sure she's a very grabby woman. Not that she is a woman. Um, I think she'd be more of a slice and dice person. Possibly. Or maybe she might try and brain jack him and just walk him into the saw. I mean, yeah, to be honest, that is probably actually what she would try for. So she has to grab hold of him so she can plant herself on his head. Yeah, so to confirm, because I never explained this properly in our character introductions, uh, when she does do the brainwashing, she is sat upon the person's head like a bowler hat and can then mind control them. Um, so effectively, she has to seat herself well planted on top of Lee's head for, um, you know, a initial amount of time. Because it's not like instant, it's like semi-instant. It is instant, isn't it? It's, it's she, semi-instant. If she wants it to be. Yeah, it's 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 instant in the way that she lands on, and then and then does it. It only takes like a couple of seconds. It's not like if she landed on someone's head, it would be mind control. You you know, there's active thought that goes into it. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Okay. So you, yeah. So her plan is to mind control Lee. So she's got to swoop in and land on his head. Yeah. So oh, there is. as 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 she gets close to him, he's going to try and hit her. Absolutely, he is. Um, I mean, she probably crawled away along the the um, side, but I imagine if she's going to go for the head, it's better to bring out the flying business. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, you know, she'll like thunk off the wall and start levitating up to try and get onto Lee. She can move fairly fast, but have you, have you ever seen drone racing? No. Right, so she. I don't think she goes as fast as drone racers. Okay. And drone races go pretty fast, but you know, I'm imagining kind of like remote control car speed. That's right. probably a good analogy. Yeah, she can probably go as fast as sort of like a high end yeah. remote control car. But obviously, she's going through the air, not through, not on the ground. But I, th- I think that seems like, I think that sounds like the reasonable kind of speed she goes at, doesn't it? Yeah, probably. Yeah, cool. So that is her speed limit. Um, but unfortunately for her, Rock Lee comes from a world of fast. Yeah, he does. So he'll probably be able to, like I say, stop her landing on his head. He'll, If she comes near, he'll be like able to hit her away. I would, you know, would he go for a defensive evade first and then, and then if she came at him again, then go for a, you know, an attack? Possibly. Um, I don't know. I feel like he'd probably be a bit more offensive than normal because his priority would be to get her defeated so we can slow the conveyor belt down again. Yeah, or at least get off of it. Yeah, yeah, that's a fair point. He might try and combine the two, do like if she comes towards him, maybe like sort of do some sort of flip out of the way and bounce off a log into an attack. Yeah, and especially if he can bash her into the ground, then she would be at least rolled for however much time she stays in contact with the ground in the direction of the of the saw, which would prove yeah, like, her main advantage here is her flight. Yeah. So if he can do something to neutralise that. Yeah, even, it probably won't be, you know, I don't imagine that he thinks that if, if I bash her to the ground, she's going to be permanently on the floor, but at least, you know, people will roll along, well, she's not a person, but she will roll along the floor. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so Doris is flying towards Rockley's head. Um, Rockley does a very quick survey of the surrounding area and like leaps off a log and goes for a, a I would guess another like downy whiny bash kick thing yeah so is that what's going to happen then she's going to 
try and make an attack, he's going to jump out of the way. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I don't know what else would happen. No, he's going to jump out of the way, like but to put his feet against the edge of a log and then spring towards her and try and maybe like grab her out of the yeah. sky. Is he going to go for a grab, or is he going to go for a uh, another another kind of kick? No, I think he'll try and grab her because if he can bring her down to, like I say, if he can bring her out of the sky. I thought he might have tried to, um, you know. You know, if you like swat a fly out the sky and then it lands on the floor, like that kind of deal, but with a kick. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, because if he grabs her, you know, what's he going to do when he grabs her? He's going to have to land on the floor himself as well. Well, he's going to land on the floor at some point anyway because he doesn't fly. Well, yeah, but I mean, if he's grabbing her to get her out the sky, then he's going to have to hold her on, on the conveyor belt and that puts him in danger's way. Mm. I suppose so. I would have thought he would just, like, you know, try and. Swatter, pretty much as I said. Yeah, all right. Uh, so how is she going to react to that? As mentioned previously, uh, she's from a world of regular humans. Um, and as although she can drive as fast as a, or, you know, roughly fly as fast as a remote control car, Lee definitely has a agility and speed and reaction time advantage here. I uh, Don't get me wrong, the first time when he was, you know, going for like a kind of testing the water attack when she was near the controls missed i think this time he's you know he's, he's got a bit more seriousness in him he's actually like right i need to i'll do something about this now so i think they it would probably make contact and she would get kicked out of the sky how durable do you think she is that's an interesting question because it's never really like um brought up in in the film, uh, she isn't no. destroyed or defeated through physical methods. But my guess would be, like, my guess would be she would survive a kick out of the sky. Um, yeah. But it would probably dent her slightly, probably bend or b- probably break one or two of her legs. Um, possibly they'd snap clean off because they don't look particularly robust. Um, but it I de- it wouldn't put her out of action. But it would, but it would definitely impede certain aspects of her um, capabilities. Yeah. So you think she's relatively quite fragile then? Yeah. I mean, like, imagine a, a metal chair. Yeah. I imagine she's like a metal chair, like you know the what the shit ones you get at like school or whatever. So like, if if you if if I kicked a metal chair onto the floor, I probably wouldn't do much to it. If Rock Lee kicked a metal chair onto it, he'd probably dent it, but you could probably still sit on it. Yeah, fair. You know what I mean? Like, don't get, and don't get me wrong, normal humans can destroy those metal chairs, but not by kicking them out of the sky. Uh, probably by heating them up or bending them by using mechanical advantages such as fulcrums. Um, so that, that would be my, my guess. Uh, I don't know how much you agree with that based on no, that sounds pretty reasonable. Seen the film as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know if it would necessarily break her spider arm things. I think they're pretty solid looking. I don't know. I'm, because, you know, if she, she gets hit, I'm not thinking the impact of Lee with her is going to break one of those. But then the rolling tumble into the ground, I think one of them might, one of them might just catch the wrong way. You know, there are six of them. They're not all going to break, but I think one of them might. Okay. The wrong way. Fair enough. So our kind of like agreed on re- resolution here is that she gets knocked out of the sky, crashes with the ground. One of her legs, whether it gets broken clean or just you know like bent and like zzz, zzz, sparky at the joints, um, but Doris does manage to use her spindly claw legs to lash onto the floor and stabilize herself with enough time that she can levitate back out of the way of the impending doom of the circular saw and aim to resolve for a, another attack. So I think then Doris would try and like fly back up. Yep. Um, thinking about how she reacts certainly towards the end of the film is she definitely gets sort of she's got quite a temper and stuff. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I think she gets a bit more less calculated and more violent like as her temper gets worse yeah no i i I agree with that from based on the films 
so she would sort of fly back up and, you know, again, get herself out of the way of the conveyor belt and then very much sort of try and go towards Lee. Probably with spindly saw blades. Yeah, you know, sort of engaging the spinning blades of death. Yeah, I mean, even if she was, even if she was thinking, which she isn't, I think that's probably the one of the better bets anyway than trying to go for another head control. Maybe, yeah. Um, so I think sort of Lee would take note of the fact that hitting her into the floor breaks off one of her arms. Yeah. And think, right, all I need to do is kind of rinse and repeat, so just sort of dodge an attack and give her a good smash. Yeah, yeah, Look, wait for the opportunities. No need to just go, um, you know, no need to go full offensive, just... I know what to, I know what to do. I know what works here. Let's just find the opportunities to do it and do it. Yeah, absolutely. So he's yeah, got to be very. He's going to try and stay sort of cool and calculated, and just like launch counterattacks and try and break her legs. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, um, yeah, again, probably just by sort of using the environment around him. Yeah, so, and, you know, we've got to consider that. Lee has still got to be, you know, running along this sawmill and jumping around, avoiding logs. But it's... the thing is, Lee's general training is to do two hundred lap, like sprint two hundred laps of the town, or like you know, a hundred laps in a handstand or something. Like yeah. he's not going to get tired from like running on a conveyor belt. Exactly. Like if it was me or you doing it, it would be. A oh, problem. I'd have died by now. Like, yeah. <laughs> but for for Lee, this is. Don't go wrong, it's going to add difficulty to the task, but it's not like a super dang- it is a dangerous situation, but it's not a situation that's outside of his um, no. you know, it's not outside of his abilities in any way. Mm. Um, yeah, I, in, in, in many respects, these are two of the worst people to have on a conveyor belt arena. Yeah, <laughs> because one of them's really good at avoiding things and really fast, and the other one can fly. That's it. Well, one of them can run for hours, and one of them can fly. Yeah, and we we kind of needed two sort of lardy overweight characters. Just... What the Inquisitor and uh, Siegfried, Siegmar. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That that would have been interesting, actually. But yeah, that's not how the die death rolls, is it? No. But yeah, but in many respects, I think it's just going to keep playing to Lee's advantage because if Doris tries to fly up, he can sort of jump off of like the because they're big logs they have on a sawmill, aren't they? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it depends on the sawmill, but I mean, we're yeah. both we're both thinking of a big log sawmill. Mm. So he can sort of like quite easily like bounce onto one of them and then use that to sort of push himself up, so he can gain the height. To... Yeah. So I think what's going to happen is, as you said. But we, as we said, Doris has recovered. She's gone into the air, started some spindly, spindly slash syndrome, and is flying towards Rock Lee in a bit of a temper, which sounds weird for a bowler hat robot. Um, I mean, even if she isn't thinking, which she probably isn't, there, there could be a subconscious. I, I don't know if that really works for um, a sentient bowler hat, but whatever. Um, thought that slashing if it you know he's clearly gonna attack me physically if i can slash his his essentially his weapons his legs his arms it's yeah. gonna be an issue for him um but what's gonna happen again as she comes near is he's just gonna outmaneuver her he's just too quick he's just too quick yeah he's gonna he's gonna see where the attack's coming from um He's going to ninja dart out the way. And before you know it, he's behind her with another kick into the ground or a punch like, into the wall. Yeah, some sort of like axe kick. like just sort of... Yeah. So, like, that's exactly what's going to happen. She comes out and um, he darts out the way. Another... Um, Doris might have enough time to half turn around, but it's not going to help. Um, and there's another chop into the ground um and on one occasion it might it might not break a limb off on another occasion she might land awkwardly on a log and it might do it might batter too even if it just blunts the blades you know it's gonna it's gonna be a uh awkward 
scenario for Doris to get out of. Um, Absolutely. And I think what's going to happen is this might happen another two, three times. So, you know, Doris gets bashed down, starting to look a bit buckled and dented. Um, It'd be done as one of those, like, sort of quick fire clips, like montage things. Yeah. Just like, ah, pff, ah, pff, ah, pff. Right. So, ne- but then let's, let's just hypothetically say that down to a point where she's effectively got one functioning fighting limb and the others, you know, they, they've still got, she'll still be able to like crawl with, use them for mobility because they're still at the end of the day, but you know, they're like snapped off at the end. But she's a robot who can self repair. And at the end of the day, she doesn't want to die. Mm-hmm. So I imagine at this point, knowing that she came in through a tiny air vent, I think she would go. She would go for the self-preservation and yeah. make a bolt for it. I think her flying would be wavery. Yeah, and I think I don't even know if she would fly all the way. If she, you know, like almost do a scrabble off the floor, a little bit of a kind of wobbly fly, a bit of a scuttle again, trying to make her way towards. Do you think her plan would be to actually retreat or to hide in the vent and repair herself and then come back fighting? Oh, absolutely that. But um, even if, to be honest, it would probably be to escape, repair, possibly self-replicate if plausible. Um, That's not really explored in this situation. We might have to explore it. I don't think we will. Um, And then come back. Now, I don't want to get all into philosophical about whether or not AI is considered life and the such. But I would suspect that Lee would have less qualms about destroying her as she's a bowler hat robot rather than a person. Right, yeah. I was about to say, as you, as we've described, um, or as you've described, Lee is quite um, reluctant to just, you know, kill someone outright. But I'm as far as he's concerned, she's she's got to be a puppet. It's true. And... How would you defeat a puppet master? Break their puppet. You break their puppet. And in that instance, they would be defeated. And then then he'd be happy. He'd be content to be done with that fight. Yeah. So I I know exactly where you're going. And I fully agree that I think he would try to destroy Doris. Like, Absolutely. I, don't think, I don't think he would think twice about trying to not destroy a fleeing puppet. So as she sort of tries to scuttle slash half fly towards the vent, I reckon he's going to, this time, rather than doing like some sort of downward kick, maybe do like a downward double feet thing and just sort of stomp on top of her, like crush her into it. You know, do you, do you reckon he's going to like just go for a gate or two just just for like, because, you know, he's he bashed her a bit and she's, you know, looking worse for wear, but he's like, well, this is it. This is the finishing move. I I've mean, got this. I, I like again, like kind of like what we said with the first episode with him. I realistically don't think he would. However, if you would like him to, for the sake of flair and drama, drama I mean, he can. If we don't think he would, then he wouldn't. Okay. No, I, I don't think he'd need to. Because it works. He would only really do it with if he need, if he like needs to. If he was going to lose, he'd do it. Yeah, no, that's him. that's fair. That's a fair point. All right, so he won't do that. He'll just um, you know, be like. You can't fight me from the shadows forever because he totally thinks that it's someone in, in the shadows. Controlling him, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not him. It's the hat. Yes. Her. Doris is definitely a her. Yeah, uh, so he'd just go out and do some sort of massive stamp. Yeah. Crush, crush Doris into the conveyor belt. Uh, even if the first blow doesn't destroy her, which it probably would by this point. Um, He's got a bunch of logs uh, available as disposable, uh, which he can easily smash, kick into her, or um, she's going to be struggling with mobility now, or he can just like. I think, wait, what? Direct her you know, into the uh, sawmill. Yeah, I was going to say, using the environment, he'd jump down, do like a two fisted, uh, or two fisted, two footed, like stomp kick thing from yeah. the air. Like, you know, snapping her last. Um, leaving her fairly immobile. I think it then just sort of pick her up and frisbee her into the saw. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's that's very Lee. So yeah, so he does that. She like, you know, you know when things like 
hit the ground and they bounce up a little bit in mm. a real life and b anime um <laughs> and bounce off a little bit she'll, she'll like do that she's like dented and sparking and stuff and on the bounce up he catches her does a full 360 spin and like when millennium discus is it's a discus throw not a frisbee throw uh, yes to the um into the into the saw blade which for which inexplicably explodes in a shower of sparks stopping the conveyor belt and the saw all in one go hooray <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah smashes her into the ground grabs her off the f- grabs her on the rebound spin throw straight into the saw blade sparks fly uh a small puff of smoke and a ex- small explosion <laughs> and uh bits and debris just kind of grind into the saw blade. and the, the little red led like just kind of flickers out and dwindles into blackness and then he's like oh i guess that's my training done for the day <laughs> time for curry that's it. Go games have some curry. And that's and that's that. That's yeah. saying. And it uh, seems like Lee has his man. He's that, got he's got his third M. That's a mesh, that's a mash, and that's a mayhem. Enter Hall of Famer numero catro. Four. Yeah, that's number four. Sweet. Well, I mean, did that go as you thought it would go when you knew who the combatants were? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, um, um, I agree. I mean, in, in many respects, it's a shame because, I mean, Doris would be really funny. I mean, I did possibly think for a moment that maybe Doris might have an edge because he would, he might not be able to catch her. But once I knew he... So it was the sort of thing, once I knew he got, like, one or two hits in, I knew it'd be fine. Mm, I mean, yeah, Doris would have had, like, a really good shout against, effectively, any unarmored person from a normal universe yeah um but lee from the naruto universe is just so used to kind of superhuman faster speeds and he's a very speedy character anyway Um, yeah she just didn't have the the gusto to to get an edge on him um but it was a cool fight that it was i had a Really fun, a really spectacular exploding ending. Yeah, well, I feel like sometimes you need a big spectacular explosion at the end. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. My clue is going to be they are a short and small internet series character um, with a facial disfigurement. <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly who it is. Yeah. <laughs> You know it's going to be great. You know it. I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think they'll win. I'll look forward to seeing that character next time then. <laughs> um, so my character uh, that I bring in is a fan-suggested character. Ooh. Yeah. Um, another anime character for me. So, you know, I might have to change things up soon and not, not keep bringing anime characters, but I oh, suppose yeah. this, one, this one was fan-suggested, so, you know. They get rolled. They get rolled. Well, that's it. Um, uh, let me try and think. But this character is from... Uh, I think an anime that is really cool but has a lot of very unnecessary nu- unnecessary nudity. Okay, I think I know the one already. Okay. But uh, she's a character with a split personality disorder. Yeah, yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Uh, she has one sort of very harmless personality, and then the one that would be coming to this battle, which is one very lethally destructive personality. And that's that's a good fan suggestion. Who suggested right? that? Uh, Toby. I don't know who Toby is, but good you work. Uh, he's a guy I work with. That's a good fan suggestion. I like that. Mm. Nice. Cool. Oh, well, I look forward to that a lot. That would be... Um... An interesting fight between, and this isn't much spoilers, between someone from a dead serious state of affairs and someone from an absolutely ridiculous comical state of affairs. Yes. Have you looked forward to the next episode 
as much as we are. Yeah, uh, they're, they're going to be two interesting characters. Yeah. So, Rock Lee joins the Hall of Fame with our first Hall of Famer, Drax the Destroyer, our second Hall of Famer, Lilith, and our third Hall of Famer, Ryu, uh, to make fourth. Two of which are now ninjas, interestingly enough. Yeah, that's true. It would be so. I think at this point, worth kind of mentioning what I got for Christmas, actually. Oh yeah, do do. do. Um, so, so my lovely wife Katie uh, got me for Christmas uh, the original hand-drawn version of our logo, which she drew. Uh, she's got framed for me, and then she's also got me like eight photo frames for the Hall of Fame, and then like she's put in the three frames so far, like a picture of Drax, Lilith, and um, Rio. So I'm now going to have to get a picture of Rock Lee printed off and put in a photo frame. A good photo of Rock Lee. Yeah. The idea being that uh, when we have all eight filled up, we can sort of shuffle them around and put and like the for frames come in matching sets of two, so we can shuffle all the pictures up and put them into frames, sort of without looking, and that will give us our fights for how the Hall of Fame will like be decided. Yeah. And then we've got it all like framed and sort of stuff, and it's really cool. Um, and I'm currently working on turning my spare room into a Mishmash Mayhem office, so where it will all be displayed. So, although today's isn't, hopefully a few podcasts down the line, I will be recording in my own little Mishmash Mayhem room. Lovely beans. Yeah. Lovely beans and dead. And, and dead, indeed. Mm. So my, my next job is to find a cool picture of Rock Lee. She did say while she was getting the pictures like printed off, because obviously she was doing it at Christmas, and loads of people who were doing like famed, framed family photos and stuff were all like, getting, going into like places and being like, oh, can you print these family photos for me? And she was like, can you print these photos of cartoon characters for me? <laughs> <laughs> she said she got a lot of weird looks. but I love it. Maybe that is her family. Mm. But yeah, so we'll have to get our Rock Lee picture printed off soon. So if you want to get in contact with us, you can do it over on the Twitter, at Podcast MMM. Well, you can let us know how you think that fight would have gone, you know, or what better characters there would have been to fight in the sawmill, because it's almost all of them. <laughs> you could also tell us what characters you'd like to see turn up in episodes in the future. Like I say, my one for next episode is a fan suggested one. I've got another few fan suggested ones on my list, actually. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I do too. I... Yeah, uh, you can also suggest if you've got any ideas for arenas for our fight to take place. Or if you want us to do a sawmill again with characters that don't fly and can outrun it. <laughs> you know, feel free to suggest sawmill again. I'd be sort of okay with it. <laughs> or something slightly different to a sawmill, but with the same general idea. Yeah. Uh, you can also, if you don't have Twitter, or if you just want to do it in an alternative way, contact us by, mess- uh, by emailing podcastmmm at gmail.com. Because we have an email address. Or electronic mail. You can listen to our podcast on tinkertailorsoldiersponge.com where we, you'll find all of the TTSS productions like us. As mentioned earlier, I'm Parliamentary Language on there. They're a politics podcast where we've done a couple of stupid crossovers with them. Hooray! We've taken what the, the very sensible things they do and we've made them stupid. Hooray! Yay! Um, yeah, that's all I need to say. Any final thoughts for the day, Mr. Wade? Um, I'm currently 7 minutes and 51 seconds into a video that's titled I paid actors... Oh, sorry, I paid voice actors to dub JoJo scenes with no context. Is it good? It's quite funny, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll let you get back to that then. I will, and then I'm going to shower, and then I'm going to play Fire Emblem, and then I'm going to go to bed. Sounds like good evening. I'm going to go to work. Oh. Oh, no. So, okay. I mean, it is, your, it is your morning, so... Kind of. I don't know, it's more of my afternoon by now. Ah, okay. And then, though, bye! Catch you all late!